Above all, there is the world's poorest nation. Life expectancy is only 45 years old and illiteracy is 98%. After 23 years of French neocolonialism, 90% of our people still experience famine. And despite the majority of our workforce being farmers, we still have to beg for food aid. We have to beg for the rice, beg for the millet. This type of assistance is counterproductive. You see, it blocks us. It instills in our spirit that, that reflex, that attitude, that we are only allowed to be beggars. The ones who bring the rice or the wheat, they see us as birds in a cage. But our country can produce all the food it needs to live a decent life. But we have to decolonize ourselves. Yeah. From the imperialist mentality that wants us egotistic slaves, mere zombies who line up just to consume and mimic foreign lifestyles. They want us afraid of our neighbor. They want us competitive. Which means throwing another human being into the mud just to feed the ego. A society like this brings violence, ignorance and makes beasts of men. Cooperation rather is the law of nature. The slave alone is responsible for his own misfortune if he harbors the illusion of the generosity of a master to set him free. Mm -hmm. So don't flee Africa. Amen. Don't flee Upper Volta, but claim it back. Yes, this is our promised land and we are going to build it with our own hands. Wow. We are slaves to no one. We must dare to invent our future. Yes. and welcome in today's episode we'll be discussing china and the relationship with africa and that's china and their relationship with africa we'll be debating if they've actually done more harm than good or they're actually joining the list of nations or new colonialist corporations exploiting and degrading africa so i'll try as much as possible in my own way and in all sincerity analyze all this with proof and evidence from both ends and both different perspectives so if you've not actually liked this video like it now and subscribe please and please this is a new channel I'm just starting so please and please and please like this video please thank you and let's get right into it china is one of if not african biggest investor and all this started when don Xiaoping, the leader of the chinese government opened china to the world in the 70s Ever since, the first major Chinese project, which was a 1,860km railway from Tanzania to Zambia, was commenced and commissioned in the 70s, the Chinese investment and loan has grown exponentially within the decade. According to a publication by The Diplomat written by Yukufu in November 2021, it is reported that the Chinese overseas foreign direct investment stock in Africa have grown a hundredfold over the 17 years period. From an estimate of 490 million in 2003 to 43.4 billion in 2020, picking at 46.1 billion in 2018. According to that same publication, loans from China to Africa is estimately worth 153 billion from the year 2000 to the year 2019. Construction, mining and manufacturing projects have been executed by various Chinese companies and these are really good things and it has shown that Chinese have brought more prosperity and development to the continent of Africa so far. That being said, we have to look at every aspect of this topic from both ends. So, dive into the bad and ugly part of this episode. Like I always say, this channel is dedicated to speaking the truth from both perspectives, and that's what I will do. Having read and listened to different publications from different sides of the spectrum on allegation of foul play, debt trap, or fair financial allegation by the Chinese, I've come to one truth and conclusion, and this is. Africans have been exploited regardless of which country it is. We as a continent are failing to see that it doesn't matter if it's the Chinese, the French or the Englishmen. 
the main point is that we are still going to be exploited regardless. The main question is how can the Chinese be more fair to us and the answer is simply they can't be fair to us because every country is fighting for the right to exist and the survival of their nation. This is Congo, one of the most poorest countries in Africa and according to the United States Geological Survey of 2021, Congo is the leading source of mined cobalt, supplying approximately 70% of the world cobalt. Now this is where the video really gets exciting because according to a publication by the New York Times in 2020, it is reported that about 80% of the known cobalt mine in Congo is actually owned by the Chinese and the remaining 20 is actually owned by other foreign bodies. Now in real layman understand it, it simply means that the Chinese backed companies own or have financial stakes in 15 of Congo's 19 cobalt producing mine. Now this is the point I'm trying to make. We are all blaming the Chinese but we are failing to see the actual problem or the cause of the problem and the solution to the problem. It's kind of easy to blame the Chinese but we forget to blame ourselves also. But I will say this, let's overlook the road construction, we could overlook the shady investments, we could also overlook the debt trap theory propagated by western media or whatever but one thing i can't overlook is the perpetual exploitation of the african people like i'm of the opinion that if you don't have the ownership of your own resources you are as good as a destitute M meaning congo don't have the right to their own land in the case of congo China and other foreign invest investors didn't have the right to this field during the early stage of the Congolese independence. But based on sh sheer greed and ignorance from various sections of the Congo, such as the Katanga people, they tried to succeed from the rest of the Congo Congolese, plunging it into chaos. Let me portray more points. Glencore is a mining conglomerate that owns mining field in Congo, but is owned by the nation of Qatar. Chinese owns about 80% of the remaining cobalt mine in Congo. What you have to understand is that this country were both poor in the 60s, and this African country which they own now were relatively richer than them in the 60s. So what then happened? Well. <laughs> As far as I'm concerned, most Africans will always blame the white man or colonialism. Well, you don't have to. Because the Qataris and the Chinese are definitely not white. <laughs> Wait, are you trying to blame African government or your African government? I'm of the opinion that the African government is not a foreign entity. But the African government is the reflection of its people. So you don't really have to blame the African government. I feel every African or every black man, as far as I'm concerned, should take share responsibility for the action and the retrogression and exploitation of Africa as a continent. In this way, or doing this, I think we just by share responsibility of our actions, we will be able at least to move forward. I end this part of the video by saying this. The Qatari investment plan or system is a system necessary for the survival of the Qatari people and Qatar as a nation. And that's why they have Glencore, the mining conglomerate. Because with that company, they already have a share in the future of the electronic car boom. Well, what do the Congolese and Africans have? It's a pity. But till date, Congolese is the highest recipient of Chinese foreign loan, plunging them into a more retrogressive state and a steady state of destitute. As far as I'm concerned, you can't progress once you don't have the ownership of your resources and you can't even know yourself or know your words once you are always in debt. So what plan do we as Africans have for ourselves? Well, as far as I'm concerned, we need more dangotes to own refineries. We need more Tolumelu to own more banks. We need more Innocent 
to have more cars or to build more cars and the the, the society have to make it easy for for someone like innocent to to produce this without the hassle and competition of other foreign investment just the same way the chinese did or the Qataris did or the saudi Ar- arabia with their saudi aramco also did like we need to learn from them without just plunging ourselves into into the the mentality of always being beggars or always being always having the idea that the the the, the whites are our enemy it doesn't have to be that way and that's just the truth because if we don't fight for our survival we'll be annihilated even the lebanese will soon have a stake in what you call the so-called new colonialist movement now this way it gets ugly because according to Quas african publication on july 16 2019 the china for years faced international pressure over its mass detention of the ethnic yuga muslims in the northwestern Xinjiang region of china under this, the disguise of re-education and of extreme thoughts the persecution of the yuga people by the China government sadly was supported by 16 African, 16 African countries. This, these 16 countries own China and no more stepped. And just by me not even saying anything, it doesn't take rocket science to piece or put pieces, two pieces together. And that's the point I'm making. The Chinese are not my enemies. The white are not my enemies. We are always missing the point like it's only in africa you hear what like new colonialism but you don't hear that in any other parts i'm not trying to say that it doesn't exist but i'm like we have to fight for our own survival and our own future just the same way every other country is fighting for that dominance like that's what i'm that's my point i'm trying to say like why are we always looking for someone to save us or like no one is coming or why are we trying hard to find enemies in the whites in the chinese in the lebanese but we forget to ask ourselves this question like what is the plan for africa like what's our plan like what are we looking forward to like we're just sitting back and as we're sitting back and asking for maybe compensation or asking for different thing or putting the blame on one other or another person we fail to understand that we are still going to be exploited regardless now i leave you by this but like i just have to leave you with this quote not everybody that is rich got rich by working hard and not everybody that is poor became poor by just being lazy if you fail to plan you plan to fail well guys i'm all out and i really appreciate you for tuning into this um channel please like subscribe and share this video please this is a new video and we're just starting so really help me out i know maybe the editing is not nice but i try as much as possible to improve and upgrade so see you in the next video thank you and god bless you love you